we are so excited you're here because we have several super high end Dollar Tree spring DIYs that you're not going to want to miss. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Oh my goodness, you guys, I am so excited. Now, I started this DIY on live. I absolutely love DIYing for you guys, but live is a whole nother story. It's so fun. I get to interact with you guys, and I don't do it too often because, y'all, I have ADHD, and holy moly, I cannot walk into bubblegum. <laughs> Anybody else, if you guys if you guys can relate, type relate in the comments. But anyway, we're going to start off with these Dollar Tree canvases. These are the 8x10. And originally I started off with 4, but I realized that it wasn't enough. So altogether I'm going to be using 6. And I start by taking them out of the plastic. And then I use my handy dandy staple puller to remove all of the staples. Now you can take these canvases off a number of different ways but my OCD doesn't like the look when the staples are still left when you use a utility knife and cut the canvas away so I took the time to pull all of my staples but that does not mean that you have to do that next once all of the frames are exposed I'm going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue to glue all of these together now I take the wood glue from Dollar Tree y'all this wood glue is actually really really nice for a dollar 25 and it does last a good while so all I do was take my uh, wood glue and put a couple dabs and then I put my hot glue in between the wood glue and then glue all of those pieces together and the purpose of the wood glue and hot glue is that the wood glue is going to last and the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together pretty quickly once I was done gluing them all together then I'm going to use my clamps just to be on the safe side to make sure that they don't go anywhere Now, if y'all know anything about these Dollar Tree frames, or I should say the frame underneath the canvas, they are pretty cheap and they use like the worst wood that isn't sanded or anything, which makes sense. So I just sand that down smooth and then I'm going to take my Dixie Bell Voodoo Stain and I'm going to stain all of the pieces. Now, the easiest way that I have found to do this, it is a little bit tricky getting in between all of the frames, but I just start off with the face of it so what you can actually see and then I paint the frames all the way around and then once I get the majority of it painted then I'm going to stand it up and paint the pieces that I couldn't see Also, make sure that you don't forget to paint your edge or stain your edge. Now, you guys use this just for inspiration. You can literally paint this frame whatever color you wish. Um, if you love that springy and colorful vibe, then you can paint this light pink, light blue, whatever. The possibilities are endless. I am just here for inspiration. Just because I do something one way does not mean that you have to do the same thing. Um, I just love to give you guys ideas. And I also love to see your recreations and the way that you guys do things because we're all just so different and we all have different eyes and we all love different stuff, right? So when you guys recreate my projects and you do it differently, I literally love it so much. So if you guys want to tag me on Instagram, if you guys ever recreate, create my projects I love to share I love to show it it makes my heart so happy to know that I am helping you guys make a gorgeous home decor so once I was done painting the frame and of course y'all know I'm impatient so I hit it with my blow dryer to dry then I'm going to take my big chip brush from Home Depot dip it in my white Waverly chalk paint and dab off the excess and then I'm going to dry brush all the way around my frame as well as on the inside of my frame 
frames. Again, if you do not like dry brushing, then totally leave that step out. Next, I'm gonna take chicken wire from Dollar Tree. Yes, you heard that right. I got that chicken wire from Dollar Tree. I actually ordered an, an entire case of this, um, and you're gonna need two rolls for this. So I start by taking it out of the out of the package, and then I'm going to lay it over the bottom half of my frame, and I'm going to use my electric stapler to staple that in place. Now a couple tips and tricks for you guys. Be very careful when you are working with chicken wire. It is sharp when you go to cut away the excess. And I always um, have a little bit excess on each side when I'm stapling that down. That way I can make sure that it's going to cover my frame completely because I have tried to like measure it out and cut it down first before. And I just find it's much easier to leave it on the roll staple as much as you can and then cut the excess away and then once you cut away the excess you can kind of see the other spots that need something to keep it secured um, so I did just want to tell you guys that little um, trick because I have worked with this stuff for a while and there's just ways to make your life a little bit easier when working with items that are not so easy to work with Once I cut the excess from the right hand side, I go ahead and I cut the excess from the left hand side and the bottom as well. Once I was done cutting away all of the excess, then I take my electric stapler. Y'all, I love this stapler. It's always linked down in the description box in my Amazon shop for you guys. And I just make sure to staple all of the rest of the pieces that were kind of like flapping, if you will. Um, I could tell that they just weren't secure very well. So I went ahead and secured them. And then I did the exact same thing for the second side using a new roll. Next, I'm gonna take this piece of scrap wood that I had in my stash. And what we're gonna do is measure it to fit the length of our little window frame. I'm gonna cut that down with my DeWalt mini circular handheld saw. And I'm going to stain that piece once I sand down the splinters on the end from cutting it. Then I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Tobacco Road is the color. And I'm going to stain all of the sides and the front and back. Now, I love this Dixie Belle stain for so many different reasons. Not only is it water-based, it's not stinky, you can't smell it at all. Um, it dries very quickly and the application is so smooth and gorgeous. Once that was dry, then I dry brushed that piece as well. And I must have not hit the record button, but I did go ahead and glue that down to the bottom with a combination of wood glue and hot glue. Once my little shelf was glued down, then to secure my shelf to make sure that when I put stuff on this, it's not going to go anywhere. All I did was take a square dowel rod. I measure that out at the bottom. Now, originally I was going to make it come all the way to the end or the edge of my shelf, but I realized that it would probably look better if I made the pieces a little bit shorter so once I measured it out and cut it with my miter shears I did go ahead and cut those pieces a little bit smaller once I was done that then I'm going to use that same combination of wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue my dowel rods going from the back frame to the bottom of the shelf making sure that both of the pieces are connected I repeat that step two more times, once in the middle and the third time on the end.
once the glue dries then i'm going to take that same stain i'm going to stain all of the pieces underneath and then once those dry of course y'all y'all know that i am super impatient so i did dry them with my blow dryer and then i once again used my large chip brush and some white waverly chalk paint and i dry brushed all of the pieces to make everything look cohesive I'm going to take my last Dollar Tree grape vine wreath. Now this one was pretty full. Usually the Dollar Tree grape vine wreaths are like super duper skinny, but this was the only one in the pack that I could find that was like nice and full like this, but it's my last one. I'll have to find some on Amazon and link them for you guys because I absolutely love grape vine wreaths. There's just something so rustic about them that I just can't get enough. So anyway, I took nine bunches of um dollar tree florals i just love the look of these for spring and i cut all of them away from the main pick and then i'm going to alternate between styles so i have the lavender picks i have two different yellow ones and i just alternate so i started with the lavender then i went to the yellow then i went to the different yellow and the one style that was yellow does have these beautiful purple flowers i'm not really too sure what they were but they only had like one in each bunch so i did um do my best to arrange those as evenly as possible and with these grapevine wreaths what i like most about them is that it's super easy you don't have to glue anything you just kind of tuck the end of the pick in and it stays in place sometimes you have to use a little bit of hot glue but you just go around and around until it is to your liking full as full or as not so full as you like it if you guys know what i mean let me know in the comments y'all i always like get so nervous about doing my voiceovers because i feel like i don't know i'm i feel like i'm the worst at explaining things but i do my best and that's what counts so anyway once i was done rearranging and arranging my floral the way that i like them around the wreath then I'm going to take this gorgeous spring ribbon that I got from Walmart. I'm going to make a very simple bow and then I'm going to tie that to the bottom of our wreath. I'm also going to lay it on our frame and just kind of get an idea of where I want the placing to be. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to use another piece of ribbon and hang it over the frame, but I ultimately decided I wasn't a big fan of the way that that looked. Um, if you like it, you can totally hang it that way, but I just liked it plain in the middle of this frame. So what I did was I laid it where I wanted it, then I lifted it up and put some hot glue under the spots that I knew that would touch the frame and then to double secure this I'm going to take this floral wire from Dollar Tree I'm going to kind of bend it up and then feed it through the chicken wire and I'm going to secure it at the top and the bottom Now, once I secured that wreath down, then I just cut off the excess and I push that wire down. That way, when it's against the wall, it won't scratch the wall or anything. I rearranged my bow because it was sitting flat. And then you guys are going to see how I made this little bunny sign in a minute. But I really didn't like the way that it looked on this wreath. I tried to shimmy it underneath to see if it looked best like behind the wreath or in front of the wreath. But I just was not a big fan. So I did use it in a different project, which literally took 2.5 seconds. <laughs> um, but I set that aside for a minute and I just kind of held up different things to see what all I wanted to put on here. I felt that it was just still a little bit too plain. Now, it looks absolutely gorgeous as is, 
but I knew that I wanted to add something a little extra. So I ultimately decided on this gorgeous bunny from Dollar Tree. It came on like a hanging sign. So I did just remove it from the sign. I then arranged it on my wreath the way that I liked. And then I just lift up small little pieces to glue that bunny down to my wreath. I also made sure to hold my bunny down nice and evenly while the glue was drying because I was gluing to this greenery that has like this white powdery stuff on it. I knew that if I did not hold it down, then the bunny probably would have popped off. So I made sure that it was secure by holding it up and that was it, you guys. Look how stunning this is. I absolutely love all of the pieces together. Now, this frame would look gorgeous by itself without the wreath so if you guys just want to make the shelf um, just so that way you have it all year round then you can totally do that but I absolutely love the way that this looks with the bunny and the wreath and everything combined so let me know down in the comments what you guys think Okay, y'all, this day, this DIY, oh my God, y'all know I can't talk. <gasps> Woo, all I want for Christmas is to be able to talk. So, y'all, this one was so easy. I took a scrap piece of stir stick that I had in my stash. Then I'm gonna take these bunnies from Dollar Tree and I glue one down to the end and I quickly realized that once I layer them, you're gonna be able to see that wood. So I stain that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and then hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know your girl, <laughs> your girl is super um, impatient. So once that was completely dry, then I'm going to glue another bunny on the end with my hot glue. Next, I'm going to put more bunnies at the bottom, leaving spaces in between. Now y'all know I love to leave my mistakes in so that way you don't make the same mistakes. So I glued my bunnies way too far apart. They did not fit correctly on here. So I did just have to pull a few of those up and move them close closer together. And then once I was done with the bottom layer, I added the top layer. Next, I'm gonna dry brush all of my little bunnies with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, hindsight is 2020, you guys. I wish that I would have used my stain to dry brush these, just because when they're hanging, you couldn't really tell very much, um, but you live and you learn, right? No big deal. I still love the way that they turned out. I just wish that I would have used um, like brown to dry brush. But anyway, I take this hippity hoppity sign that we took the bunny off originally and I'm going to lay my little bunnies in a row over top of the hanger and just kind of figure out where I want it. Then I'm going to flip it around and staple that back to the hanger. And literally, you guys, that was it for this DIY. It took me a whole hot five minutes, but I absolutely love the way that it turned out. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number two. If you guys are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out. Plus, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you part of my crafty family because you guys, we are so close to 100K and I know that we can do it together. Let's jump back in. For this DIY, I'm gonna take this little cap whatever you want to call it it was an ornament back from christmas time and it is that little galvanized look which i absolutely love so i take the hanger off and it also had this greenery up at the top which it was only secured with some hot glue so i just pulled that off as well 
Next, I'm going to take my moss as well as my Spanish moss and I'm going to arrange that to cover the bottom of this little cap. Once I was done, then I took this little baby wreath. I got this from Hobby Lobby, I believe, and I glue that down on top of the Spanish moss and regular moss. I then just take some raffia and some more Spanish moss and moss and I'm just arranging this in here because if you haven't figured it out yet we're making a nest and with bird nests they used so many different materials to make their nests so I wanted to I wanted it to look as natural as possible. Once I arranged all of that stuff on the inside of that little mini wreath, then I'm going to take a long strand of the Spanish moss and I'm going to glue that around. That way you cannot see the grapevine wreath and it just kind of creates like a dome. That way in the middle we can arrange some eggs. I quickly cut off the excess and then I took these little foam eggs from Dollar Tree and I paint them with my Dixie Bell. Actually, it's not Dixie Bell. Good Lord, help me. <laughs> oh my God. I believe this is called Lakeshore. Don't quote me, you guys. I can't remember what the name of this Waverly chalk paint is, but I do know that it's this gorgeous like duck egg blue. So I just paint all of my eggs with that paint. Now, I definitely recommend to put it on a stick. I was just being lazy and trying to work quickly. So I wasn't too concerned with getting paint on my hands, but I painted all three of my eggs blow dried them and then I also gave them a second coat once they were arranged into our little nest with some hot glue. And that was it for DIY number three. Now, again, y'all know I'm extra and I wanted to keep adding to this. Now, I just put that little wooden bunny on top just for a little bit of decoration. But I just was loving the simplicity of this little bird's nest. So let me know down in the comments. Would you guys have added anything or do you love it just the way it is? Okay, sweet friends, for the last and final DIY, if you guys made it this far in the video, please leave me a green heart that lets me know that you're still here and still watching. Now, this is a bonus DIY because it's not spring. It's it's a farmhouse DIY, but I did do this on live, so I wanted to include it in this video. So I start off with this Christmas barn from Dollar Tree, and I take off that little roof frame. Then I flip it over and I'm going to remove those staples with my staple pull and sand that down smooth. Next, I'm going to give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once I was done covering it to my liking, of course, I hit it with my blow dryer. Surprise, surprise. And then once it was completely dry, then I'm going to use my big chip brush and my voodoo stain. Actually, this is antique wax. I'm going to take my big chip brush and some antique wax. I'm going to dip my chip brush into the antique wax just a little bit on the end. And I'm going to dab off the excess and then dry brush. Now, I love to dry brush in layers because you can always add more but to take it away you have to paint over it again so i like to dry brush in in layers i start off very light-handed and work from there once i was satisfied with my dry brushing then i'm going to take that same antique wax and paint our little roof piece Once my frame was completely covered and I made sure that it was completely dry, then I'm going to use my little chip brush that I get off Amazon. They're always linked in my Amazon shop down below. Then I'm going to dry brush all the way around that roof piece with my white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to take this absolutely stunning transfer. This is... 
I was going to say March's Club Couture, but it's actually April's Club Couture transfer that is exclusive to Club Couture and designers. So if you guys want to learn how to get this transfer and how to get 40% off everything in the shop, then text my number at the end of the video, the word chalk, and I will get you guys all of that info. But I just make sure to um, fuzz my transfer. Now you don't have to do that. I was just kind of showing on live what fuzzing is. Um, but I normally don't fuzz any of my transfers. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I never have issues. But anyway, I fuzzed the transfer, laid that down onto my sign, and then I transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Now the trick to pulling these up is you want to pull in one direction so you don't want to take it from the corner and pull on an angle you want to pull the entire thing in one direction and then you want to also pull that nice and slow once that was completely dry then I went ahead and glued down my roof piece with some hot glue y'all know I'm OCD and I could see that the edge was showing so I did pop that off re-glue it Flip the sign around and then glue it backwards. That way I could see exactly where I was gluing it and I could glue it as perfect as possible. And literally you guys, that quick and easy, you have absolutely stunning farmhouse decor. So let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. Again, if you guys made it this, for, this far, don't forget to leave me a green heart down below. I love each and every one of you. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is almost nine years sober I know that if I can do it you can do it as well also you guys I have been literally going live every single night um, and if you guys want to join my lives and get alerts for my videos text my number at the end of the video and if you also want to learn how I just recently lost 80 pounds or if you want to learn how to earn online income, text my number, the word ketone or biz, and I would love to have you a part of my dream team. I'm only one person. I can only help so many people. And if you guys want to help others, join me in business. Let me show you guys how to run an online business, how to make as much money as you want. And it, with that being said, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Don't forget to text me and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.